Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Today's episode is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis using the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Or you can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go over to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Dangerous Assignment. The original air date, November the 26th, 1952, and the title is A Nursery Rhyme. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble, but... When I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to have me trying to trap a killer with a new kind of a weapon, a nursery rhyme. Morning, Commissioner. You sent for me? Steve, are you fond of Swedish cooking? Yeah, sure. So there's a man named Fred Gainsley. He's with a project we're participating in to evaluate Scandinavian defense potential with headquarters in Stockholm. Several times a week, Gainsley has a lunch tray sent up to his office from a nearby cafe. So? Someone in the project is apparently using that tray as a means of getting secret information to the outside. Gainsley? No. He's the one who told us about it. Quite by accident, yesterday afternoon, he discovered a message in code tucked under a napkin. Discovered it just before the tray was to be picked up. And the waiter who came to pick up the tray? He didn't show up and hasn't been seen since. Someone in the project must have tipped him off that the message had been intercepted. Steve, get over to Stockholm. Check with Gainsley. Find out who's peddling this secret information and put a stop to it. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. The National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another dangerous assignment. Here's a word about some of NBC's great Sunday programs. We're justifiably proud of such stellar productions as Theater Guild on the Air, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, and Dragnet in our Sunday schedule. Theater Guild brings you top stars of Broadway and Hollywood in the best available dramatic works. And this combination of top stars and great writing makes Theater Guild one of the high spots of the week. And you'll find that Phil Harris and Alice Faye team together to present one of radio's best comedy shows on Sunday night. The same night that Dragnet presents true stories of your police force in action. So, this Sunday and every Sunday, set your dial to the NBC radio network for the best radio programming. I've got my assignment. Fly over to Stockholm and find out who's copying top secret government information from a project we're participating in. It's early Wednesday evening when my plane lands and I hustle over to the building where the project is quartered. Several lights are burning in the east wing and it looks like some of the office staff is putting in overtime. Inside, I flash my credentials and then follow a young clerk down the corridor. 
Uh, Mr. Gainsley should be in his office, sir. At least he was there a few minutes ago. Good. Uh, here we are. Mm. Uh, Mr. Gainsley, you have a... Vi- Mr. Gainsley? Doesn't seem to be around. Hmm. Well, he was sitting over there at the typewriter when I looked in a couple of minutes ago. The French windows over there, they're open. Oh, sure, they lead out to the back garden. Uh, Mr. Gainsley probably stepped out for a breather. Uh, hey, what? That came from the garden. Come on. Gainsley? Gainsley, you out here? It's pretty dark. Yeah. See anything? No. Hard to... With all this shrubbery. Where does this path lead to? Back gate. Let's try it. Gainsley! There it is, up ahead. Should be locked, though. Yeah, it is. Does this wall go all the way around the garden? That's right. Okay, you take this side and I'll... What is it? Gainsley? Yes. Is he... Yeah. Look, his, his coat's been ripped open. Yeah, inside pocket torn. No wallet here. Here. Anywhere else. That back gate the only way out of this garden? Yes, unless you climbed over the wall. Ten feet high at least. No, I think our killer sneaked around us and ducked back into Gainsley's office. Come on. Johnny, is that you? Yes, Miss Borland. Is something wrong? Uh, this is Mr. Mitchell. Miss Borland is Mr. Gainsley's secretary. How do you do, Mr. Mitchell? I, I thought I heard a shot. You did, Miss Borland. I'm afraid someone's just shot your boss. Mr. Gainsley? Shot? Where is he? I, I must... Hold it. Won't do any good. You mean he's... Oh, horrible. Anyone come through here the last minute or so? No, no one. Why? There are other officers facing the patio, uh, the garden, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, that's Mr. Halverson's, Mr. Walker's. Okay, we'll check them in a minute. Something else I want to look at first. Come on, let's go back inside. You've been gone out of the office long, Miss Borland? Ten minutes or so. Mr. Gainsley sent me down to the file room. I see. And when you looked in, Johnny, he was alone? Right, he, he was packing away at the typewriter. Mr. Gainsley was at my typewriter? Yeah. Look, there's a piece of paper still in it. That's what I'm interested in. Let's see what... What is it, Mr. Mitchell? Oh, brother. Here's what Mr. Gainsley typed out. One sentence. What did he write? It reads, Mary had a little lamb. Yeah, that's it. Mary had a little lamb. It's typed at the top of the page, nice and neat, nothing else. So Mary had a little lamb. And it looks like I'm going to have a little headache trying to figure this one out. Seconds later, the other employees come pouring into the office, all of them generating a lot of excitement. I finally get them to clear out and return to their desks. I'm left alone with Miss Borland. I don't understand it, Mr. Mitchell. Why would anyone want to kill Fred, Mr. Gainsley? Well, there happens to be a very good reason. We'll skip it, though, for now. You mind answering a few questions? No, of course not. I'm particularly interested in the lunch tray delivered to this office yesterday. The lunch tray? Well, what can I tell you about... Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Mitchell. Does all this have anything to do with the piece of paper Mr. Gainsley found on that tray yesterday? You know about that? Of course. I was with him when he found it. He seemed puzzled. I asked him about it, and he said it was nothing. Folded the paper and put it in his wallet. His wallet? Uh, uh. Tell me, where is this tray picked up, Miss Borland? There's a table outside in the hall. I usually place the tray there when Mr. Gainsley has finished lunch. What time did you place it there yesterday, do you remember? A mm, few minutes after one, I'd say. And what time is it usually picked up? Half an hour or so later. How did Gainsley happen to find the piece of paper? Well, he'd been working during his lunch, and sometime after I'd taken the tray into the hall, he missed his fountain pen. Thought he might have left it on the tray, huh? Yes, it, the two of us went out to look. Is the tray usually picked up by the same waiter? Yes, his name's Carl. He works at a cafe down the street. That's all I know. What does he look like? Oh, short, very short. Heavy set. He wears rather thick glasses. Okay, Miss Borland, I guess that'll be all for now. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, come in. You, uh, Dave Walker? Right, and this is Gil Halverson. How are you, Halverson? Uh, Still a bit shaken, I'm afraid, Mr. Mitchell. Gainsley was a good friend of ours. You two have the other two officers in this wing. Both of you heard the shot? I did. I was here in my office at the time. First, I thought it was a car backfiring. Then I heard people running down the hall, so I went out to investigate. Your French windows were open? No, locked. I was getting ready to go on home. Why? It's possible a killer slipped out of the garden by way of one of these offices. That could have been mine. My windows were open, I'm afraid. And where were you? Downstairs, the file room. 
That's why I didn't hear the shot. File room, huh? You uh, see Miss Borland there? I... No, I didn't. Look, what's this all about, anyway? Why would anyone want to kill Gainsley? Yeah, and what's this business about Mary's little lamb? How do you know about that, Walker? Well, Johnny the clerk told us. What's it mean? I wouldn't know. Well, it was meant for you, wasn't it? Was it? Well, look, you're a government agent. You come here looking for Gainsley. He gets himself murdered, but before that, he leaves a message in his typewriter. And you don't know what it means? I don't, yet. Maybe you have some ideas. Well, maybe. All right, Halverson, let's have it. Well, Walk and I were talking about it before you came in. It, it has to be a message of some kind, but what? So we finally arrived at something. Oh, sure, it might sound crazy, but I... Uh... Come on, what is it? Well, look, there's a cafe here in town called the Golden Fleece. So what's that got to do with... Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Oh, I don't know, Halverson. It, it sounds pretty far-fetched. Well, sure it does, but still is that... that the uh, cafe where Gainsley got his tray? No. Well, the fleece is run by an American named Daniels. It's on the other side of town. Well, as I say, it sounds a little wild, but So does I... everything else about the deal. Thanks for the lead. I'll follow it up. I go back to Gainsley's office. The police are there now. I huddle with Inspector Yorse, and then I grab a cab and head out across town. Twenty minutes later, I pull up at a small cafe and bar known as the Golden Fleece. Sure, it's a wild lead, a thousand to one shot, but at this stage of the game, I can't pass up anything. No matter how silly it sounds, there's a chance I might run into something or someone, maybe a waiter named Carl. I'm sorry, Pilgrim, I don't think I can help you. As you see, I don't employ waiters, just dolls. Yes, sir, give me a good waitress anytime. You wouldn't have one named Mary by any chance. Mary? Thought you were looking for a guy named Carl. Look, do you have a waitress named Mary? Nope. Ilga, Hilda, and Sam. Sam? Samantha. We call her Sam for short. Hey, that's her over there, racking up the meatballs. Yeah. Look, uh, maybe you have a regular customer named Carl. Well, it could be. This is Sweden. Carl isn't a very unusual name. As a matter of fact, there's a regular customer of mine over there at the bar. His name's Carl. Huh? Where? End of the bar. See the little guy standing at the far end? Yeah, short and fat. He, he fits the bill. Yeah, well, wait till he moves out of the way. The tall, skinny character sitting back of him. That's Carl. Oh. All right, Daniel. Just make believe like I didn't come in. I'm sorry, Pilgrim. I wasn't able to help you. You haven't, but thanks just the same. I go back outside, wait a few minutes in front of the Golden Fleece for Inspector Yorson's squad car to show, and when it doesn't, I start walking along the street toward the corner, but I don't make it. Halfway up the block, someone steps out of a doorway behind me. A cord drops around my throat, tugs back hard. My head hits the side of the building. I go out like a light. Steve Mitchell will continue his dangerous assignment in just a moment. Next time your car needs a grease job or you're having your shoes repaired or a suit or dress dry cleaned, look around in the place that performs the service for you. You'll see something new, a poster carrying the words OPS ceiling prices for retail services and listing the principal services which the place performs and the OPS ceiling prices. Now, the new OPS rule requires that these official posters must also be displayed in shops that do repair work on radios, TV sets, household electrical equipment, on watches and clocks, furnaces, heaters, automobiles, and trucks. Yes, the prices you see may be the highest prices which can lawfully be charged. You may pay less, but you need pay no more. Get the habit of checking the new OPS price charts in service establishments where you trade. And when you shop for goods or services, shop carefully. Use restraint in your buying and spending, and save when you can all you can. Remember, cooperation can whip inflation. Now back to Dangerous Assignment and Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Mitchell? Yeah. Mitchell? What? Oh, Inspector Yorson. What happened? I guess somebody didn't like the way I breathe and tried to put a stop to it. The cord around your neck? Yeah. You must have gotten it off just in time. Uh, perhaps whoever it was saw my car approaching and had to run. Did you get a look at him? No, he came up behind me. 
Uh, what did you find out inside the cafe? The Golden Fleece? Not much. Uh, this attempt on your life seems to indicate that the cafe is somehow involved, however. Looks that way. Could be this waiter I'm looking for. Carl spotted me nosing around and tried to put me out of his way. Uh, if so, he's probably some distance from here by now. Yeah. Well, let's go back to the project headquarters and go to work on that nursery rhyme again. We might as well use Gainsley's office. All right. Mitchell? Oh, Halverson. You boys work pretty late. Yeah. Yeah, they've been piling it on lately. I'm just knocking off now. Walker work this late, too? No, no. I guess he cleaned up his desk earlier than usual tonight. He has left the building? Yeah. Matter of fact, he left shortly after you did. Oh? Uh, any luck at the Golden Place? Yeah. All bad. But at least it looks like a solid lead. See you in the morning. Oh, sure. Uh, so Walker left here shortly after you did. That's very interesting. Yeah. Well, here we are. Do you still have the piece of paper? Right here. Uh, Mary had a little lamb. Do you suppose that Mr. Gainsley intended this as some sort of message for you, Mitchell? I doubt it, Inspector. He had no way of knowing I'd be arriving just then, the way it looks to me. He was sitting here at the typewriter, probably heard a sound outside, went to investigate. And was killed? Oh, quite possibly. But then, uh, what does it mean, this fragment of a nursery rhyme? Answer that one and we'll be halfway home. You know, it's possible Gansley was working on that message he intercepted on his lunch tray. Yes, the, the message might have been in code. Mary had a little lamb, could be part of it. Seems to tie in with the Golden Fleece Cafe, all right. Yeah, it could be, but... But what? I don't know. There's something wrong, something that doesn't quite add up. If Gansley was trying to decipher the message, why do it on a typewriter? Uh, good point. Well, let's see... Gainsley was sitting here at the typewriter. He heard... Hmm, hey, keys jammed. He heard a noise outside. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? I just had an idea. Maybe we've been on the wrong track with Mary and her little lamb. What do you mean? Just a second. I want to put a piece of paper in. Hey, now. M... A-R-Y-H-A-D. You are typing the same phrase. Oh, yeah. Now, let's take a look. I see nothing unusual. Maybe that's the point. Gainsley could have typed that line to check the typewriter. He might have been looking for some imperfection, a letter out of line or something like that. Yes. Quite possibly he wanted to compare it with the message he had intercepted. Sure. This was the logical typewriter for him to start with. It belongs to his secretary, Miss Borland. But there are no irregularities on this machine. So he drew a blank here, but how about the others in the building? Yes. Let's see. He could have been looking for something to do with the letter A. There are four of them in the sentence. Now, if we can find a typewriter like that, we may have our killer... split up. Inspector Yorison takes one wing of the building. I take the other. I work my way from room to room, checking the typewriters. I draw a blank until I get to Walker's office. M-A-R-A-D-E-A-L. Yeah. Letter A. Raised slightly all four times. This could be the one. Oh, Mr. Mitchell. Hello, Miss Borland. I heard someone moving around in Mr. Walker's office and couldn't imagine who it could be. You're here pretty late tonight, aren't you? I forgot something in my desk and came back to get it. Mr. Mitchell, were you in my office earlier? Yeah. I found the same sentence from the nursery rhyme typed out on my desk. You were testing my typewriter the same as Mr. Gainsley was doing. You figured it out too, huh? Okay, so I was, but I'm not interested in your typewriter anymore, Miss Borland. This is the one. Mr. Walker's? Yeah. The A is raised slightly. But Mr. Walker couldn't have typed the message Mr. Gainsley intercepted. Why not? He was out of town for a week. Walker was? Yes, on business. He got back only yesterday. Oh, great. Anybody could have used his typewriter then. Yes, I suppose so. I... Wait a minute. Hmm? This basket of correspondence on Walker's desk. Oh. That's probably correspondence he hasn't signed yet. What's wrong with it? Nothing. That's the point. 
The A's in these letters aren't raised. Mr. Mitchell, that means somebody switched typewriters and put this one here in Mr. Walker's office. It sure does. Any way of checking on these machines to find out which office they were originally assigned to? Yes, all typewriters are listed by serial numbers. The list is in the stock room. Let's take a look. <laughs> think the answer is here, Mr. Mitchell? Could be. There's a copy in this file room of every confidential report sent out of this project, isn't it? Of course. Whoever switched the typewriters and stole the list couldn't possibly have removed all the reports typed on that machine. That's the point. You take one of those other file folders and start... Well, well, never mind the other folder. You found it? Sure did. Take a look at this report dated three weeks ago. The letter A is raised slightly all through it. Yeah. See this signature at the bottom? Steve... Oh, hello, Halverson. When I saw you heading down here to the basement, I figured you were getting too warm, Mitchell. You're the boy who was smuggling information out on Gainsley's lunch tray. You spotted him checking Karen's typewriter and figured he was on the right track. That's why you killed him, huh? Yeah, that's right. And you dreamed up that wild goose chase about the Golden Fleece Cafe. I had to keep you thinking the nursery rhyme was some sort of code. So, what happens now? You shoot both of us? Oh, hardly. The security guard's in the building. So is your friend Inspector Yorson. You shot it too, it'd bring them running. No, no. I got a much better idea. Step back into the vault, both of you. The vault? You heard me. Okay, it's good enough. Gonna lock us in, huh? You catch on pretty quick. Look, there's no doorknob on the inside. The vault is soundproof. Also, there's no ventilation. So go ahead, yell if you want to. You use up the oxygen faster. Steve. You catch on quick, too, Karen. So long, kids. <laughs> Mr. Halverson? What? Oh. Oh, oh yeah, Inspector Yorson. I'm looking for Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell? Have you seen him? Oh, why, yes. It was about ten minutes ago. He hurried out of the building. Oh? Yeah, he seemed very excited. He uh, said something about going back to the Golden Fleece Cafe. Well, that's, that's very interesting, Mr. Halverson. It is? Yes. If he went to the Golden Fleece... Uh, who is the man who just stepped around the corner behind you? Hello, oh, jump. Don't try it. Just hold still while I get that gun of yours. Yeah. Halverson is our man? He sure is, Inspector. How'd you get out of there, Mitchell? An old trick, Halverson. I was holding a folded sheet of paper in my hand. Remember the report made out on your typewriter? When you closed the door, I slid the paper between the door and the jam over the latch. That kept the door from locking. That, that sheet of paper? Yeah, that sheet of paper sort of wrapped you up, didn't it? Our star, Brian Donlevy, will return in just a moment. Daytime programming on the NBC radio network is tops in listening pleasure. And while you're at home during the day, set your dial to this NBC station for entertainment by Bob Hope, Dave Garraway, Walter O'Keefe, Warren Hull, Bob and Ray, and Tommy Bartlett. Welcome Travelers from Chicago features Tommy Bartlett with interesting interviews. Walter O'Keefe presents comedy on Double or Nothing. And then Warren Hull is your host on the program with a heart, Strike It Rich, while Bob and Ray entertain for 15 minutes of mirth and madness. Dave Garraway brightens your day with his informal patter and music you enjoy hearing, and Bob Hope now brings his comedy talents to the daytime scene. So consult your local newspaper for the time of broadcast of all these great shows. Check your Hamilton watch for the time of day. And be with us every day, Monday through Friday, for unsurpassed daytime radio entertainment. And now, here's a special note. Next Monday, Bob Hope and Dave Garraway will be heard at a new time on some NBC stations. Next week, the Mediterranean, a pleasure cruise that almost turns out to be a one-way trip. And that will be Steve Mitchell's dangerous assignment next week. <laughs> Included in tonight's cast were Ken Peters, Kay Stewart, Tony Barrett, Dan Riss, and Herb Bygren. This is John Storm speaking.
Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian John Doe, and is directed by Bill Karn. Be with us again next week at this time, when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another transcribed Dangerous Assignment. Always listen for the familiar three NBC chimes. They're your invitation to fine radio entertainment. Tomorrow, hear both Judy Canova and Truth or Consequences on NBC. Welcome back. I'm a little dubious that a piece of paper would be enough to hold the vault open. However, I'm sure there's an expert on Bolt somewhere, so I'll bow to their opinion. Other than that, I thought this was a good uh, little mystery with some solid misdirection that Dave Mitchell was able to cut through by realizing he was at a dead end. Well, we turn now to listener comments and feedback. Over on YouTube, Barney writes, Regarding the butterfly chasers, Corny as corn soup, but charming as well. Well, thanks so much for the comment, I think. And now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to thank Adrian, Patreon supporter since January 2020, currently supporting the podcast at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Adrian. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. If you're listening on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and feel free to leave a comment. We'll be back next Wednesday with another episode of Dangerous Assignment. But join us back here tomorrow for Mr. Chameleon, where... ...was threatened by Jones and Dale. Mr. Chameleon, are you implying that I might have killed those men? Hm, how quaint. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure that the blackmailing notes came from Jones and Dale. They were anonymous. But Jones and Dale had access to all the facts. Besides, I... Yes, you have a low opinion of detectives. Yes, Mrs. Cartwright, where were you between midnight and 12.30? Are you asking me for an alibi? I am, Mrs. Cartwright. I was in bed, young man. My maid will verify that. Besides, I thought that this, this... Danny Mulcahy you spoke of was suspected of having killed those men. He is a suspect. The evidence against him is very strong. Then why aren't you willing to let it go at that? Does this Danny Mulcahy, does he have an alibi? I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.